Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to use wet dry audio controls in Adobe Premiere Pro. A lot of people don't realize that Premiere Pro can do this. If you don't know what wet dry controls are, uh, stick around. If you do skip ahead a little bit in the video, I'm gonna explain it to everyone else. So wet dry controls are basically the ability to control the amount of the effect that's being applied in combination with the original audio. So if you apply certain effects, it'll distort and sort of bend your audio. However, you don't want to take that audio and completely bend it. You don't want to apply that effect 100% to the audio. So you want to blend in a little bit of the original. The original is the dry, the wet is the one with the effect on it. Usually there's a ratio in between of how much you want with the dry and how much you want with the wet. And Premiere Pro allows you to do this just a little bit different. So then, let's get started on this. Let's first go over the wet controls. Like if we did 100%, if we just take an effect and drag it onto our effect right here. I have this little sequence set up. Uh, I went to Envato Marketplace, a link in the description below for that. Um, it's this great place with like a, a little monthly fee and you can get like hundreds of thousands of stock images and sounds and videos and everything. So I just built this little thing where we have this sunlight cave and then a little ambient sound and then a gunshot right here. And what we've done is we've taken this round reverb and we've dragged it onto here and just applied it. Now let's take a listen to this and you'll notice that this does not sound like a gunshot. You heard it right there, it's very, very quiet. It's almost like someone took a drum and just, you know, beat it really far away. And that's not what we wanna go for here. That's not the gunshot sound. What we want is it to sound like it's in the cave and it to reverberate outwards. The reason for this is we're getting 100% wet here. Our, our original audio is completely and totally gone. So instead of this, instead of dragging the effect in, Let's turn this off. We're gonna to go to the audio track mixer up here. If you don't see this, just go up to window, down to audio track mixer, and then just turn it on right there, and it'll jump up. And you'll notice we have a couple of things here. I've created a couple of sub mixes, and that's just to show that we can create them. You can also delete them. They disappear from here. And we have this other one right here, this other sub mix. And before I get started, let's just listen to the difference of what we can achieve. So now you actually hear the pop of the gun, and if we turn that off right here, the... So that's the original pop, and then we also added in that reverb behind it. So we've mixed the wet, we've mixed the dry, and we've come up with a really neat effect. So let's, let's go over how to actually do this. What we need is this thing called a submix. To create a submix, you need to go over here. If you don't have this white bar up here, it's just this little tiny, uh, little carrot up there. You bring that down and what you have is the top where you can add effects and the bottom where you can send your audio. So this is the, these are the send channels. So in this situation, what we're doing is we're sending the submix one. If we didn't have one here, we'd drop this down and we just hit create stereo submix. It's then going to generate a submix over here with typically not with an effect. So we can set that back to none and we'll see that we don't have any effects here. So now when we play this back, we're just gonna get something exactly like the audio is. Just a single gunshot, there's nothing going on here. And we're going to take this, once it's routed through, we're gonna add the effect in. So we go up here to reverb, and then we go into the surround reverb. And we'll have a, a bunch of different things we can control directly down here, like for example, gain. However, if we wanna control it like normal, just double click on this, it'll bring up the whole panel here. What we did with the other one that we dragged on was we went with deep well, and then we just dragged the gain up a little bit so we can hear it some more. Now, if we take a listen to this, you'll hear we actually hear it in the background. A lot of times though, when you start it off, you'll actually be down here like to the negatives, and you won't, it'll sound like you actually didn't add an effect. And this is where we get into that wet dry controls. So a lot of audio editing programs give us a ratio where it'll actually ratio how much of the effect we're bringing in. Premiere doesn't do that. What it does is this is our audio control. This is essentially the dry and this is the wet. And depending on what we bring these values to, that's our mix. So if this is at zero and this is at zero, then what we get is we get a zero, zero. So it's gonna be half and half of dry to wet. And that's usually a pretty good combination. If we want a little bit more of the original sound, we bring this up or we take this down and vice versa. We could bring this down and take this up to bring in more of the quote unquote wet sound. Now what's neat is we can do this. If we right click the submix, we actually have control over the pre and the post fader. If you're in you know, the audio engineering landscape, this is important because it allows you to choose 
what the effect is getting based on what we change the audio to. And let's go over that a little bit more. So if we bring this down, we get this up just a little bit more. If we change this to, uh, let's go post fader, that means the audio is going to be sent after we faded, and this is the quote unquote fader, after we faded the volume. So that means if we bring this down to zero or negative infinity, listen, nothing's going to happen because that effect, this isn't receiving anything. Basically, it looks here first, we're at no audio, then it sends no audio over here. If we right click on this and go pre-fader, that means it's first going to send the audio channel over and then look to actually play this audio down. And so if we play this back, it sounds like the original. It sounds like that drum beat uh, that we started off with. And so depending on what effects you wanna create, that's a very important thing because I know that if you right click this, you can go pre or post fade. Let's bring that back up and let's take another listen here. And there we go. That's basically it on the wet, dry controls here. We can go really advanced here and we can send this to another channel. We can keep creating submixes and have this like really, really strong mix going back and forth. But that's the basics of wet, dry controls. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below or our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to make a video every other day. Until next time, guys, see ya.